Is it a gift box or a scrapbook? Find out today on the Scrapbook Showgram. Well, here's the project that we're going to make today, and it looks like kind of a fun little gift box. Um, and actually, if you think of photos as special gifts, I suppose it is a gift box, because when you lift the lid, what you have is really this fun scrapbook. It is a perfect way to feature four, or you could even have a fifth photo um, inside. If you wanted to, you could also have photos on the outsides. Um, but if you look at it, you can see that it's simply two strips of paper that have been crisscrossed together that fold up perfectly, and what holds them together as the box is this great little lid. It actually is like the glue that holds it together, except the beauty of it is it's glueless. Okay, we're going to see how to make this lid, and it's amazingly simple. I started with a 12 inch square and you want to take um, a straight edge and a pencil and you're going to lay it down and you're going to create a line from corner to corner. I've already done it. If I turn it over you can see on this side that I've already used that straight edge to draw a line on the diagonal on all four corners so that I've got my X. <laughs> and now it's time to start folding. Um, and you're going to take one of the edges and you're going to take that corner. Hopefully you can see right in there, you want to line it up, get that first point right where, at that intersection, where those diagonal lines meet, and then go to the next corner and do the same thing. You're going to continue this way and go all the way around. You're going to fold all four corners this way. The first few steps are actually repeated on all four corners, so it makes it really easy. You do the first one and then you just kind of continue. That gives you the first four folds. Now for the next set of folds, I'm going to take one of the, of the corners and this time I'm going to bring it in and I'm going to line the tip up with the fold that I just made and aligning it also with the, the pencil lines. So I'm going to go ahead, do my next fold. I'm going to turn. You're going to do the same thing, continue this way all the way around. When I get to this next one, there's two folds here. You want to go to the furthest one. This is the one that you use for this set of folds. And then do the same thing with the final corner. So you now have the second batch of folds, and the third batch of folds are really simple. You're going to just take the corner, and this time you're going to align it up with the very first fold you come to. And once again, right along the pencil line. So I'm going to turn this and make the same fold on all four of the corners. Believe it or not, this is going to complete the folding. Um, it's, this is an incredibly simple but really effective way to make a sturdy little box. Now I'm going to take the scissors, and it doesn't matter which corner, this is the first step that you're not going to do the same thing on all four edges, so don't get ahead. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pick one of the fold lines, um, and I don't know if you can see it. Hopefully you Jim can get in really close, and you can see I'm going to cut along this fold line from this edge, until I hit the center fold. This right here is, these folds here are showing me what the, the actual lid is going to be to the box. So I'm going to cut right along that fold line until I hit what would be the box lid. And then I'm going to come over on the other side of this corner and I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to cut on that fold line until I get to that the box lid itself. Now you can't do this on all four corners. What you want to do is skip the two sides. Whatever, wherever you started you're going to go directly across from it and do the exact same thing. I'm going to follow on that fold line until I hit that 
square that's my box lid and come across and do the same thing on this fold line. Stopping once again. Notice that I'm stopping, if I hold it up, I'm stopping at this edge here. This is going to be the actual top. Well, if you look at closely, you can see that I've rubber stamped circles using just the watermarking pad, and I've done them just a very, you know, kind of a random pattern on the top and also on the sides. It's easiest to do this while it's flat. So I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to rubber stamp along this square and these outside four edges that will actually be the sides of the box. To create the polka dots, I'm going to use a watermark ink pad. Um, which I love. All it does is it just deepens the color of whatever paper you've started with. And I'm going to use this. I just cut some circles. You can use a die cutting system or just scissors and cut circles out of foam or this is self adhesive rubber. I stuck on an old film canister. You can use an old cork from a wine bottle, something to allow you to be able to hold it. I'm going to use this to rubber stamp some of the large circles. So it's just going to be a random placement. Some of these are going to get covered over. And usually a nice design is when you have sort of that triangle shape. And I'm going to go back. It really looks nice to have some of the designs go over the folded edge. So I want to just create a fun, random pattern to begin with of these larger circles. And I even want some of the circles to look like they go off the bottom edge. So I'm going to go and do that as well. Once I've done the larger circles, now I'm going to just take two different size pencils and I'm going to use, you know, a fresh eraser to be able to create the polka dots in a couple of other sizes. So I'm going to ink this up and just add some fun extra dots in this size. Okay, that's pretty good coverage on what's kind of the medium sized circle. Now I'll take the smaller pencil and I'll go back, just do the same thing, just tap it into the ink pad to get a lot of ink on there and then just start having fun. If you like to do projects with your kids, oh, this is something that's really fun for them to do. This stamping with a pencil eraser, and it's something that, you know, we all have around the house. So it's a really great thing to allow them to be able to participate in your scrapbooking as well. Once you have all of the polka dots, I'm going to do the rest of the decorating of the box lid once the lid is, up, is constructed. So I'm going to turn it back over and I'm going to position it so that this, the edges that I cut are on the sides. And I'm just going to bring the corners forward one at a time. So the first thing I'm going to do is take some adhesive and I'm going to just put a little bit of it right along that pencil line so that when I bring this back, I'm going to bring that first corner right back to that center X like we started with. And that adhesive that I put down will hold it. Now I'm going to reverse on this fold line and bring it up. And I'm going to reverse on this fold line, bring these two edges in. The fold lines are already there and you can see how it's starting. I'm going to turn this over so that I can do directly across, do the same thing. I'm going to add adhesive right down the pencil line to just help hold it in there. And I'll go ahead, reinforce that fold, and then bring up and fold the opposite direction of the one that was there. And the same thing with these edges here so that you can really start to see how it's creating the box. Then I'm going to turn it and do the final two. So I'm going to put my adhesive right again, once again, on the pencil line and bring it over the edge. And I'm going to fold back this final fold before I get it in there because it's a little easier when it's loose. 
position it into place and then push where that adhesive was and then I'll go back and I'll really push down on my folds bring it around do the same thing I'm gonna put my adhesive along the pencil line I'm gonna reverse fold this final little edge bring it over the lip push it into place so that that adhesive that I put on there can hold it in and then sometimes I'll even go back at this point with my bone folder and now really reinforce all four of these folded edges or corners of that box lid to give it a really nice crease. It makes just a great sturdy little box lid. Now in order to decorate it what I'm going to do is I'm going to take um, a couple of different things. I'm going to take this black and I've added some white stripes to it using just a white Sakura pen. It's a jelly roll pen and it's a great way to add detail. Sometimes you just can't find the pattern paper that you want and you can easily make it yourself. If you have dark colored paper by just adding the detail, in this case just simple stripes with a white pen and it, it dries incredibly quickly so we're not even going to really have to put anything on hold while well, this is drying. If I bring the lid up you can see that I've got this little red edge as well so I think to start with what I'm going to do is put some adhesive um, on the back of this black so that I can overlap it with the red and I'm going to go ahead and put adhesive on the whole thing because I want it to stick also to the lid. I'm going to overlap just a tiny little bit so I just want a little bit of that red to show. And I have one end. Oh. Looks like my red is a little longer than my black. Hopefully, I pre-measured so that hopefully they're going to be a good um, size for the whole lid. And now because the red doesn't have adhesive, I'm going to go back and add a little more adhesive to the red. And I just have this as just a band, basically, you know, somewhat in the middle of this box lid. So I'm going to set it down, eyeball it when it looks like it's pretty straight, go to one edge. I'll pull it around. I want to make sure that I have enough. Whew, pretty close. <laughs> what I'm going to do is trim off where it would overlap because I want the inside of the lid to be nice looking too. So I'm going to just trim that edge, bring this around, overlap this, and then I'll trim off the excess from this edge the same way. And then I'll go ahead and really press down on so that I have a nice bond with that adhesive onto this first um, embellishment on the lid. Now if you look back um, at mine, I also have a little die cut flower. I used a Sizzix machine to die cut this white flower and I'm going to place um, a little bit of orange behind so that it will show through as the center of the flower. So I've gone ahead and I've put a little bit of adhesive on the white already. All I'm going to do is just trim off a little chunk of orange like you see here that um, I'll grab my tweezers so I can try to keep my fingers out of the way and let you see. So I'm going to go ahead and position this so that it shows through those holes like so. And in this case I also want to lift it up a little bit. So I'm going to take a little bit of foam adhesive and once again I just need a little piece of it. So I'll place it here on the flower on the back side and then when I remove the backing on this other edge I'll turn it over and go ahead and position this onto that band and then the final thing the same die that I used to cut the flower also has these petal shapes so I'm going to take and add a little bit of detail with a marker so I'll add just a little bit of that like kind of that vein that runs down the center and 
I need to put adhesive. And if you haven't seen me do this before, when I need to put adhesive on something small, it's handy to take a post-it note and turn it over. This is the sticky side, you know, this is not sticky, but this is just that sticky edge on the post-it note. I'm going to place each of the leaves onto this um, post-it note and with the, the, the back side that I want the adhesive to go on is what's exposed. The adhesive on the post-it is going to hold it in place so that I can put my adhesive in. You know, you can put more if you want. It doesn't need to be a ton. And then I'm going to go back and peel these off and I'll go ahead and I'll add these to the as kind of the final element. Once again, see if I can do this with tweezers so that my hands are not in the way. And add one final one on this edge to create that design that decorates the box lid. So you can see that goes together really easily. Now for the bottom of the box, what the bottom is made from are two strips once again, I'm using white cardstock, and because the lid of the box is just a hair, if you start with a 12-inch square piece of paper, the lid ends up being just a little bit greater than 4 inches. So what I did was I cut my strips at 4 inches, and I've gone back with a bone folder, and I've measured in and scored at 4 inches, measured in and scored at 4, and since it's 12, you know, it's going to come out even. So I've done that with each of these, and these scores, I can barely see them, so I know you probably can't see them, but as I fold, it will become more clear. I'm going to fold on my score line, and then I turn it over and I make sure that I'm lining it up with the rest of the strip of the paper to make sure that it's a nice straight fold line. So here is the first strip. Okay, so at this point I've done the scoring for both of these and now I simply am going to overlap them to create the box bottom. So I'm going to put my adhesive on the center portion of one of the strips and overlap it. <laughs> I can't get rid of the extra little pieces with the, the other strip that goes the other direction. And you want to make sure that all of your corners, you know, ha that you've placed it so that all of these are still going to fold. You know, double check while you can still move it around. And yes, everything is going to still work. So here's going to be the box. And now it's time to decorate it. And it was really simple. All I did was I added some yellow vellum to create these stripes. So let me show you. I started with vellum that I'd run through a Xyron machine to add the adhesive and in order to make it easy to remove the backing I've gone ahead and first I've stripped away just a little piece before going back and cutting out these just wavy stripes with a pair of scissors. Now I've got, if I pull this back up, you can see I now have a really easy place to be able to pull that backing away. So I'm going to start in um, in the middle section. Let me turn this over. I'll do the one closest to you. Maybe that'll be the easiest. I'm going to start in the middle and I'm going to, you know, eyeball about where the middle is, line that up, and I'm going to go right over the edge. And then I'll take another vellum strip and this time I'm going to go to the outside edge and when I have this lined up, if I don't get the edge, I can always trim it off with my scissors later. But if I can save myself an extra strip, an, an, an extra um, task, it's always helpful to do. So now that I have the outside edge, it's easy to go back and just center in between those two the third stripe. One of the advantages to cutting these stripes with scissors and making them wavy on purpose means that if they're not exactly positioned so that the spacing is 
exactly even between all of them. The waviness makes it so, not only does your eye not really notice if they're not perfectly spaced, but it also kind of seems like it was done on purpose. Like you sort of wanted that kind of random look. So I'll get this last stripe down. And I'm going to leave these because it's handy to go back. After you've done all the four corners, you can go back and put a colored strip to cover over that like you can see that I did on the base here. And it just it gives extra stability, plus it means you don't have to be so careful when you're putting all the stripes. Now once you've done all four corners, it's going to create this exact idea that you've seen here in the original. Now to open this up, now it's time to position the photos. Well, since my photos that I'm printing are a four by six size, it's really perfect because these are four inch squares, each of these sides. I have to do very little trimming on my photos as well. So I'm gonna take this picture and I could put it on the photo, but it makes more sense for me to put it on the side, the inside side of the box. That way I'm not trying to figure out where to stop the adhesive. So then I have to look and decide, you know, I'm going to trim some of the edges. Obviously I want to make sure that I get all of Kate and her, her boyfriend. Um, and then there are several other photos that also feature the dog, so I'm not as worried about getting every little piece of the dog in this particular shot. Once again, I want to fold it and make sure that it will fold up. I must have, my photo must be a tiny bit um, larger, or it could be, I don't know how easy it is for you to see, but what I'm doing now is I'm trimming along the side of the box to just remove the excess that is hanging over the edge of the photo. And I'll do the same thing. Let's see if I can do this direction so I can still hold it and you can see out my hands in the way. And I'll go ahead and I'll trim this one. And the side on my box must be just a hair smaller. There's a tiny little bit and that would bother me. So I'm gonna trim off a little bit of the top of this as well so that you end up with that first photo and the first decorated side. You do the same thing and add the rest of the photos around all four of the edges. Now you could put a, another photo in the bottom. You could also do your journaling right in the bottom, but journaling is something that's handy to do on a separate paper so that if you make a mistake or you don't like how your handwriting looks or you misspell a word, all you have to do is do a new sheet. So in this case, I'll bring this up so you can see what I used here. I just took and I cut a square that would fit right into the, nestle into the bottom of the box, and I've decorated it with this band of um, sort of a deeper gold, and then I've added the same sort of thing as the stripes on the lid, only this time they're orange. So you can see I've added the orange stripes. I've gone ahead with my white pen and I've done more striping to create this element here. I've added, um, I've just handwritten the Puppy Zone Day because that was what the photos were taken on Puppy Zone Day. I don't know how easy it is, but I've also used my VersaMark, um, the Watermark ink pad, to also create paw prints as a pattern on here. And because it's loose, now I'm gonna turn it over and Kate is gonna print what she wants to say on the back of this because this will be her little scrapbook. And then the final little detail is just going to be added um, with one of these fun little black and white stickers from Mrs. Grossman's. And that completes the journaling portion. What's really fun about this, normally when I give this to Caitlin, since the dogs play, she plays with them with um, a tennis ball. I'm going to drop the tennis ball in here and like the, the dog leash, any other little 3D souvenirs can sit inside this box as well. And then once again, when you place the lid, it holds the edges together and it just creates this cool little thing. You know, it looks like a great gift box until you lift the lid and then what a super surprise to find photos inside. Remember, I love hearing your comments, and be sure to share us with your scrapbooking friends, and if you haven't already subscribed, be sure to do so. Bye for now.